Hey everybody, uh, this is a brand new lesson I haven't taught before, so we'll see how this goes. I'll be making kind of one little bit off the cuff with you guys, but I want to show you some really cool examples here. Uh, what you're going to be making is a gradient logo uh, based off an image, uh, and we're going to be bringing it down into simple colors and then adding a gradient over top of it. And you can quite literally do this for just about anything here, as you can see in these examples. Uh, it could be just a person, it could be more of like, you know, with equipment here, like the motorcycle, or it could even be almost a scene with like the lo-fi girl sitting in like a chair. Uh, I have a couple others here. The original inspiration of this is actually like the Final Fantasy logos from the video games. Uh, so that's why I did this one right here. This was two people. So if you want to do more than one image that does get complicated, but it is a possibility. Um, and then this one here also has like an additive thing where I put an image inside the base uh, image that I did the gradient with. You also notice that in all of them that they have text, really simple though. Again, we're going for like a clean, minimalistic gradient kind of logo. So whatever text you use, it will be a solid black color with a thin white outline just to help like when it's over top of the uh, image here. All right, let me go over a couple other things uh, before we start. When, oh, well, yeah, here, uh, I've been playing this game recently, Final Fantasy what is it, 16, uh, and that's where I was like, dang, that logo is really cool, like, I wonder if I can make it, and that's how I threw this lesson together, so, uh, but here's all their logos from, like, the history of, like, this video game series, where they do this one image with this, like, gradient kind of, like, overlay over the image, uh, I think they're pretty, pretty neat logos, so, um, Gra gathering your images. That, that last one there, that Elden Ring one that I showed you, was this image right here of this guy, and then I threw this image, the logo of the game, like into that like uh, character. Other ones that work really, really well, black and white ink. So like this Batman one would be really cool. Uh, generic like soccer player silhouette. Like I didn't want to name any other soccer players. I don't want to like take ideas away from you guys, but like this would work. You could use an image of a real person. Uh, that being said, they're harder. Like if you were to go to Google Images here real quick, um, something I would search would be like, let me do like Batman like ink, I-N-K, and then go to images and you'll find more like ink drawings of Batman or of anybody really. Like if you can find like an ink version of them, half the work is done for you, but don't worry, I'll show you all the steps anyway, um, where you could take a colored one and turn it into like an ink look like this. All right, for this demo one, we're all gonna be building one together. So uh, you need to go to Schoology and you're gonna be looking for a folder called Gradient Logo right here. Underneath that, you will see other assignments and whatnot, but I want you to find the Superman JPEG right here. Click on that, it'll open up. And then I want you to two finger click on it and you should see uh, Save Image As, go to that. So Save Image As after the two finger click. And we are just gonna put it on the desktop. I'm just gonna call it Superman and hit save. So there it is on my desktop right there. I can close out of Internet Explorer now, or not Internet Explorer, oh my God, what year is it? Uh, Safari. Um, all right, uh, let's close this too. All right, so with this logo, here's all your steps. This is gonna be done exclusively in Photoshop, so go ahead and open up Photoshop. I'll let that open. And uh, up here in the top left, you're going to hit new file right here. After new file, oh, it looks like my dimensions saved from last time. So you can title it whatever you want. I'm just gonna call this uh, Superman Demo. Uh, you wanna make sure the dimensions are in inches. The width is 12, the height is also 12. So we're doing a square this time, resolution 300. Color mode, uh, I would actually make it RGB for this one just in case with some of the filters that we're doing. Uh, the color might not be as print precise as CMYK, but we need it this way. I'll leave everything else as default. Don't change anything down there. And then you can go ahead and hit create at the bottom. All right, you should end up with a white square like this. Uh, we're going to drag that Superman image in. So where Adobe Photoshop 2023 is at the top, just click and drag and move Photoshop a little bit over to the left so that you can see that Superman logo and click and drag him in to where you see the green plus sign and then let go. It should appear in. You can then move Photoshop back over if you want to. We're gonna to wanna to size this up, so go to one of the corner pockets. Now you don't want it to straight up fill the space, but you want it to be pretty sizable. So like something like this will look good even on your final results. And then go ahead and hit return once you have it in a good spot. The other really annoying thing with a lot of images is over here on the layers, you will see a Superman layer now. You're gonna see this little button right here, or icon. That means that it's a smart image and it's not editable. So we have to change that. Uh, not on the text Superman, but like right where my cursor is, click with two fingers at once 
and you're gonna get a menu. Scroll down really far, and you should eventually see rasterize layer. Go ahead and choose that, rasterize layer. That'll take that smart image away, so now the layer is super editable. All right, we're gonna do, I think it was three edits. Gosh, it's been about a week since I've done the demos on my own. Uh, so they are under image. So go to image at the top of the page right here, and then you're gonna hover over adjustments. The first one that we're gonna do is hue saturation right here. So click on hue saturation. When that pops up, it'll come up in this little window right here. Turn the saturation all the way down. I know in the Superman thing, you're not gonna see any change because it is black and white, but this is like on your real project. If you have a full colored image of a person that you're using, you need to make it grayscale. So turn it saturation to negative 100, hit okay. The next step that you're gonna do is back in image, back in adjustments, and then you're gonna to go to brightness contrast. This is arguably, I would say, the most important one in terms of like how good your final result is. So with brightness contrast, contrast all the way up, 100. Now this image I chose, and I chose it because it's a good image, it's just black and white, so you're not gonna see again a change on your real project, I promise you, you will. Brightness, you can play around with this. You'll notice if you turn the brightness down, you're gonna get a little bit more like definition in those darker shades. Uh, if you turn brightness up, it'll be much more minimalistic. So this is up to you guys and where you think it should be. I'm gonna go for, yeah, 39 is some content. Uh, you still do want, you know, solid black lines just about everywhere and then hit okay. But the only, the only rule I would say is a must is contrast should be 100 pretty much no matter what your image is. All right, the last one, then this is where maybe even on this one, you will see a change. You're gonna go to image and you're gonna go to adjustments again. This time we're gonna go to threshold. And if you're doing this on your real project with a real color image, this is where you're gonna be like, oh, holy moly, here's a big change. So with threshold, this is gonna be kind of random. You just kind of move this line and again to wherever you're happy with the level of detail. Having threshold all the way up in this case gives me, it's too chunky. Uh, having threshold all the way down is just pixelated and weird. So somewhere for me in the middle here, but again, this will vary depending on the image dramatically. So on your real project, don't just go 147, like actually pick the right like slider setting that you need and then hit okay. All right, you can't see it right now. If you look really closely over here, you can. In the Superman logo, he does have a white background to him and we gotta get rid of that before we go further. So the next tool that you need is Magic Wand. It's hidden under object selection. So the fourth tool down is object selection but if you click with two fingers, you get this expanded menu, and then you'll see Magic Wand right here. So click on Magic Wand. With Magic Wand, settings at the top are really important. Tolerance, make it 20. Anti-Alysis, check mark that, and turn off Contiguous, and turn off Sample All Layers. Uh, what this'll do is you wanna click somewhere where it's white, like on your, maybe dead in his face right here, and just click. And you'll see that a lot of things have selected. Like it looks like it's selected, hopefully all of the white content. After it does that, hit the delete key on the keyboard. You're not gonna notice anything like right off the bat. Um, or actually, let me do this differently. Let's go back a little bit. Instead of white, just because on your real project, this, this is actually probably the better way to do it. Click somewhere where it's solid black, okay? Uh, and I say this because in this image, it might not make a difference, but on your real one, I promise you it will. So again, let me reiterate, you're clicking where there's solid black. It'll select all of the black content uh, available, every black shade imaginable. Then I want you to click with two fingers and you'll get this menu. You're gonna see an option for select inverse right here. Choose that. Now everything that isn't black is selected. So it's not just white, like maybe even like little minor grays are also selected. Now hit the delete key. All right, after you hit the delete key, again, doesn't look like anything changed because it was white on white, but I promise you did. Hold down command and hit the letter D key. D is in deselect. That'll get rid of that. So now it is just black, which is perfect for our next and really biggest step. All right, we are going to put a gradient over this layer. So down at the bottom here, you will see FX right here. See it? There it is, FX. Uh, when you click on that, scroll down, and you are looking for gradient overlay. In gradient overlay, 
Uh, make sure the blend mode is normal. Make sure the opacity is all the way up. And then you can click this little down arrow where you see my current colors from my last gradient that I made. And you can pick any of these. Like you could go into the ones, maybe we'll start with blue because it's, I, I, when I think Superman, I think like red and blue. So I'm just gonna pick this one, but feel free to pick whatever one you want. We are gonna edit them. So you can, you know, maybe I'll start with a red one. I don't really like a lot of these reds. So I feel like it'll be easier for me maybe to start with the blue. All right. Um, don't worry yet about the angle. We're going to get back to that. So after you have your base color that you want for a Superman, what you're going to look for is the big bar of color. And I want you to click on it. After you do, the gradient editor will open up. And down here, you should see two um, little squares of color. You might see three, depending on the gradient that you've chosen. I'm going to make four, I think. So I'm going to click once here and once here. And now I have four squares, okay? With these squares, if you double tap on any of these little ones, you can then pick any color that you want. I'll go for more of like a royal blue and I'll hit okay. Then in this one here, maybe I'll go for more of like a lighter blue. Maybe we'll transition uh, to maybe like here and I'll hit okay. Now I wanna start making it into like the reds. So we'll go for like a dark red and then I'll go for more of like a standard fire engine red. All right, so there are my four colors. You can also click and drag these squares too. Whoa. If you wanna, if you want them to get closer, like when I have these two right next to each other, if you look at the little preview here, there's not as much of a blend, which actually kind of looked nice. So up to you where you want it to go. I actually think I am gonna like legit butt those up together. And then I'm gonna hit okay. Again, no right or wrong, totally up to you on this. Now, uh, angle. Uh, I have it at 130 right now. You can click and drag and this little circle kind of moves around on the angle. Um, find what works best for you, what you think looks the coolest. Um, I don't really know. I'm just gonna play around with it. I liked the original, my original angle, and I might actually even go back to that. I think I am. Uh, this, you can move this layer style window over just to get like a full quick look. I do like that better. Uh, I want a little bit more blue in there though, so maybe, uh, maybe I'll stick with this angle, but then what you could do is you go back into your color box here and then I can move, like it was too red for me. So I'm gonna move the blues over, leaving that angle, but there we go. Now I get a little bit more blue. So mess with the angle, mess with that box. When you're satisfied, hit okay. We're almost done, like this lesson is fast. All right, um, after you have that, font. So, uh, te or text, I guess I should say, or type. The type tool is right down here. Horizontal type tool is the main one, uh, the T. But before you do that, and before you pick any font that on the computer, I'm going to show you a website with like thousands of really, really cool fonts. It's called dafont.com. And in here, there's all these different categories of fonts. Like if you want to go for more of like groovy is like 70s kind of like stuff. Uh, or you could do uh, like more country of origin ones. Like I could go with like a Eastern European or in this case Russian. But all of your Eastern European looks are in here. Um, or I could go for more of like a sci-fi under techno kind of ones. Oh, there's literally like a Batman font right there. There's the Star Wars font. Um, or up at the top, there's a search bar. And I'm gonna search Superman just to see if there's anything like it. Um, I mean, some of them are more like, not emojis, I forget what the word was, but like picture-based ones. We don't really want that. I don't really like that either. And I don't like that. So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna actually stick in this sci-fi one and see if there was anything I like. Uh, I might actually go with the Squid Games font. That kind of works. Um, let's go with... I'm just going to pick one because I don't want to stay here for too, too long. We're going to go with Swipe A. So you guys go around, find one that you like, take a little bit of time. Uh, again, this is not our final one. We're all just making the Superman one as a demo together. Um, after you like one, you're going to see a little download button off to the right. Go ahead and hit this download. And it doesn't look like anything happens, but go to the download section of Safari, which is right here with this down arrow, go ahead and click on that. And then uh, if you, you might see it like just like this, where it's a .ttf, it might also be in a folder. So if you see a folder icon, open up the folder icon and look for the .ttf or .otf file type. It doesn't matter, they're essentially the same thing. Double click on them, either TTF or OTF. And it should open up in a font book previewer like this, where it shows you all the letters. Then hit install right here. 
and it doesn't really look like anything happened, but if you go to my fonts, these are all the fonts that you've downloaded. I'm gonna quick try to find the one that, there it is, Swipe Race. You do need to remember the name of the font, and I'll show you why right now. So we're gonna go back into Photoshop once you've installed your font. And now hopefully we have the type tool selected. Up here in the top, I wanna say the default was uh, Myriad Pro. So let me change that to that so it looks like you, for you guys. Right here, Myriad Pro. You can click, swipe, and delete that. And then you wanna type in your font. Oh, it was something race, wasn't it? Yeah, there it is for me, swipe race. So type in your font, uh, the literal name, and then you have it. Uh, the size of the font, right now I have it at 114. Make it like 150 to start. Uh, now, you know what, make it 72 to start. Yeah, so right here, 72. And then we're just gonna click just once, anywhere on your screen. I'm gonna click like right here. Just click once, boom, okay? You will see lorem ipsum, but the ipsum kind of like might go off the page for you depending on the size of your font. Now you are ready to type. So that's just like placeholder text. So I'm gonna type in Superman, Superman, and it's too big, right? So I'm gonna take the move tool, the top left tool here, right here, and I'm gonna move it in and I'm gonna size it down a little bit with these size bars, the little sideway things. I could put this kind of wherever I want. I might actually put it more over him like this and then I'll hit return. After I put this over him uh, on the text layer itself right here, we're gonna add that little white outline that I was speaking of before. Go back to FX at the bottom and under FX, you're gonna do stroke. Under stroke, stroke is like an outline. Uh, maybe you probably hopefully learned that from Illustrator actually by now. Uh, here are your settings. They're already pre-saved for me. Size, 10 pixels right here. Position, outside, blend mode, normal. Opacity, 100. Color, straight up white. And then hit okay. And now the logo is quite literally over Superman. All right. Uh, little extra thing if you want to. Actually, I won't even play this in class. Stop, good job, done, demo done. Uh, if you're going for like a more difficult version of the project, the Superman layer right here, the text layer, I just want to make it like a normal layer. Uh, so if I think if I two finger click on it and I do rasterize type, now it's no longer like a text layer. I'm going to take the lasso tool right here, third tool down from the top. And I'm looking at the U in super and I'm just going to kind of guess and check. You would have to do a much more detailed job of this for realsies where his hand is. I'm gonna select it, I'm gonna hit delete, I'm gonna do command D to deselect. And now it looks like his arm is in front of the, uh, the logo. All right, um, after that, you're just gonna cloud save your file, you're gonna save it on the computer like we normally do, and you're gonna upload to Schoology, and you're done, good job.